This single skill makes a dog adoptable. Good. We all need to go through this as animal care technicians. Without giving her the skill to save her life, you're dooming her to death. Even 98% of the Chihuahua's DNA is the same as a wolf. Why is that so important? Because when we understand the root behaviors, the core behaviors of a dog is a predator. In, at, at its root, it's a predator. When we understand that, we can start to understand its behaviors and how to work with them. So if we have a dog that has a high degree of prey drive, we know the dog has a high desire to chase kill and eat what it sees, right? Whether that is triggered by a squirrel running across the floor or a kid on a bicycle running across the road. That, that innate trigger is still predatory and it's still at its core what it is. And we have to understand how to, how to squash that or how to harness it. And I don't like to squash drives because I think when you push a drive out here, it comes up here. And you don't know what you're gonna get on this side. You know what you're getting rid of, but when you start to crush prey drives, it's gonna come out somewhere. It's like having a balloon, a water balloon. If I squeeze here, it all comes out here. If I squeeze here, it goes back here. If I squeeze both, it just pops. And that's the way the dog works, right? So it's no squashing things, it's harnessing things. It's turning a prey drive into a pack drive. It's turning disobedience into, uh, sorry, prey and disobedience into fun. So a dog in prey drive generally can't listen to you because he's in another mode. But if we channel that prey drive into obedience, then we have a real simple opportunity to use that prey drive to get obedience and to get a reward through us as opposed to through chasing the kid or the squirrel or whatever. And remember, when a dog does predatory behavior, core behavior, such as chasing a squirrel, people think it's cute. They think, oh, it's fun, he's having fun, he's doing this, and it is. The problem is it's a non-fulfilling behavior. So the dog will never get to chase and catch the squirrel and eat it and do whatever. He's gonna just chase it, chase it, run across the street, get hit by a car, and be dead. That's what we're dealing with. If the dog was living in the wild, yeah, it would chase the rabbit, eat the rabbit, and everything would be fine. But our dogs aren't wired like that anymore. So we wanna use and channel those drives. Um, pet dogs have muted because of selective breeding. So we wanna understand that all the different dogs you see here did stem out of one or two lines of dogs. Right? That's real clear to understand. If you understand the way they're in tune with our energy and our body language as a method of communication, you can better communicate with a dog. Dogs don't talk to each other. Right? Dogs do not vocally communicate. They don't look at each other and go woof, 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 woof. It doesn't happen. Right? They will bark at each other, but it's a part of a greater communication. Like I might touch Pete on the shoulder, and that is part of our communication, but if I just walk up to somebody and touch him on the shoulder, it's really awkward. But if I'm talking to you and I say, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a long time, I really missed you, how you been, and then I touch you on the shoulder, it's an addition to the communication. So dogs are the opposite. Dogs work through body language, through energy, and then vocalization. Right? So it's the last form of communication that dogs have is that. When breeding goes rampant and you have puppy mill breeders and backyard breeders and, and, and stray dogs breeding, all dogs don't have the strength of the good dogs that they should, that they should have. Right? So if we were to go through and say, okay, these three dogs are going to be good dogs, these ones we're not going to breed or we're going to cull, which is sad to say, but we're gonna do that, then eventually you'd have all really good dogs. But too many dogs are around, too many dogs are interbred um, and, and, and backyard bred and everything like that, so you have a lot of genetically bad dogs, right? So like, like pit bulls, so you have, you know, people say, oh, pit bulls are aggressive. Well, that's not necessarily true. You have a lot of people who've bred pit bulls for fighting characteristics. So what they would do, they'd go through the, the pack, the litter, and they would find the dogs that have the highest propensity towards dog aggression, and they would take those out and breed those dogs with other dogs that had the highest likelihood for dog aggression. So you, now you're creating that drive, right? And you can create drives. I mean, I have uh, two working line shepherds. Well, 
that drive is harnessed and is built into the dog over and over and over again through generation after generation. And now it's a natural tendency for the dog to want to bite a person, want to attack a person, want to confront a person and do that. That's really easy. So that's what happened in the pit bull line. So you started breeding for the behavior, breeding for the behavior, and not breeding for the good behavior. right? And now you have these dogs leaking into other lines, to good lines, through people not neutering their dogs. And now you have this interspersed dog aggression in the pit bull. It could have just as easily went into the Jack Russell Terrier, the German Shepherd, any other dog. Right? So you don't blame the pit bull for the aggression. Blame the people who did it. Doesn't mean you have to love pit bulls. I don't care what breed you like. This is a non-breed class, right? Like I'm a non-race guy. Like I love black people and white people and Christians and Jews and Muslims and Hindus. But I also hate a lot of those people too, right? I'm an equal opportunity lover and hater because it's an individual situation. I may not like that dog, but it's not because he's a Sharpe or a Shepherd or a Pit or a Rod or whatever. It's because that dog isn't good. Just like that person might not be good. So we want to be really honest with ourselves. You know? And because the shelter is more than anything filled with pits, you, know, I mean, you have a dense population of pit and pit mixes in a shelter. Anybody who tells you anything different is lying to you. Right? So of course, if you have 100 pits and three shepherds and one uh, Sharpe, and you go, God, we have like 10 aggressive pit bulls. They go, oh, see, he's prejudiced against pit bulls. No, but I've got 100 of them. It's only 10% of them. If I had 3% bad you know, sharp haze, I'd have a tenth of one dog, because there's only one of those dogs. So understand the drives of the dog. Understand that they're all rooted in one common thing. And depending on how they were bred, go to an AKC show. Go to a confirmation show. And look at the American Staffordshire Terrier. There's no dog aggression. 